Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to review short answer questions and answers for the course Introduction to Psychology. If you are new to this channel, may you please subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, welcome. Enjoy this, uh, these questions. And this is the part one of a four part series for the course Introduction to Psychology. Number one, define the term psychology. You may choose to write the questions, the, the answers to this question, and then you can check with the answers that I have provided where you meet, or you can choose to, re to review the questions as we go. As you are well aware, the word psychology, there are several different meanings from ancient modern times. And if you remember, the word psychology, the term psych comes from the Greek word psych, which means mind, and logy, which means study of. So it is defined as the scientific study of mental processes and human behaviors. If you look at this uh, definition, you'll notice that uh, there are three parts, scientific study, mental processes, and human behavior. When we talk about uh, modern psychology, it is considered a science because it uh, bases its conclusions on data and information that is obtained from systematic observations. And the second part, mental processes, these refer to what individuals think and uh, behavior denotes one's actions as he or she interacts with others. For this question, you are guided by the number of marks. For four marks, you are not supposed to write four, five pages, but you have to write briefly and concise what we mean by the term psychology. Number two, briefly explain the following terms, id, ego, super ego. And from your studies, you will notice that uh, these are psychoanalytic terms that are derived from the works of Sigmund Freud, and they denote uh, the personality structures is uh, they are propounded by Sigmund. The id, this is the most primitive part of the mind, and uh, it contains the sexual and aggressive drives and hidden memories. The ego, this operates on the reality principle, which works to satisfy its desires in the most uh, reasonable and realistic ways. The ego may do so this by um, delaying gratification, compromising or anything else that will avoid the negative consequences of going against uh, what is uh, prevailing at the current time. And um, the superego is the moral compass of personality upholding a sense of right and wrong. These values are initially learned from one's parents. However, the superego continues to grow over time, enabling children to adopt moral standards from other people they admire, like their teachers and uh, close associates. Number three, state and explain the goals of psychology. As you are now aware, the goals of psychology are about four, and they include um, the first goal, the goal of description that's described. It, it informs us what has happened. This helps researchers to try to describe, classify uh, named observational behaviors. Explain. Explanations attempt to tell why a certain behavior or mental process is okay. And the third one, the predict of prediction. Prediction aims to identify when and under what conditions a future behavior or mental process is likely to occur. And the con number four, control. This means uh, applying psychological knowledge to prevent unwanted outcomes or to bring about desired goals. Some current textbooks include the goal number five, which is to improve human conditions or human livelihoods. Number six, 
Number four, briefly explain the reasons for the abandonment of uh, introspection as a method of uh, study in psychological research. If you remember, introspection is derived from the works of uh, William Wundt, the structuralists, and this is the method of study that they used when they were carrying out their studies. And there were several reasons that led to this abandonment of this uh, method of study. And the reasons include, and when we look at um, introspection as, a, as an item, it's, uh, as a concept, this is a, refl a reflexive looking inward. In other terms, it is an examination of one's own, own thoughts and feelings. And an individual has to analyze themselves and the goal behind introspection was to gain one's emotional awareness. And uh, the first reason was that uh, structuralism was too concerned with internal behavior, which is not directly observ observable and could not be accurately measured. And it also failed as a method of study to study complex mental disorders in human beings and animals. And it was also deemed to be too subjective is uh, one had to share his own subjective experience and one required extensive training as a structuralist to effectively carry out introspection. So you will find that these are some of the reasons why it was abandoned as a method of study. Number five, state the criticisms leveled against the behaviorist approach. And uh, one of the biggest criticisms is that uh, it is fundamentally a reductionist philosophy. And what do we mean by reductionist? It um, emphasizes that all behaviors can be shaped and altered through training. And there's no room for other influences like uh, cognitive or emotional aspects within the organism. It also ignored mental processes that are involved in learning as we have uh, come to understand from the cognitive perspective who view these processes as important and according to behaviorists, people can only learn as a result of their experiences and they viewed human beings as passive learners Unlike humanist psychologists who view humans as active agents who are able to control and determine their own development. So these are some of the criticisms that have been leveled against the behaviorist approach. Number six, indicate uh, William James' contribution to functionalism. So as you are now aware, William James was a, a leading figure in uh, functionalism. And some of his contributions include that he was one of the pioneers of this early, of this early school of thought. And his book, The Principles of uh, Psychology, which was published in uh, 1890, is still considered to be one of the most classic and influential text in the history of psychology. And uh, this book, uh, this was a two volume synthesis and a summary of uh, psychology. He is often referred to as the father of psychology and is best known for the James Large theory of emotion, which proposes that uh, an event triggers a psychophysiological reaction, which we then interpret. He proposed the theory or functionalism as a revolt against the weaknesses of uh, structuralism, in particular the weaknesses of uh, introspection as a method of study. So he, has, he, was, he was a pioneer and contributed immensely in this uh, school of thought. And he's also known to be, if he was a philosopher, pra pragmatism. So he, he contributed a lot to the development of psychology and as well as functionalism is a school of thought. Number seven, what is a defense mechanism 
state and explain any three defense mechanisms that you are aware of. Defense mechanisms are found uh, in uh, psychoanalysis is proposed by Sigmund Freud. And um, there are psychological strategies that are unconsciously used to protect a person from anxiety arising from unacceptable thoughts or feelings and this emanate from the ego as it tries to defend itself or as it tries to ensure that one doesn't suffer from the consequences of anxiety and um, the most prominent is denial in this case when one refuses to accept reality or effects that are on the ground the other is a reaction formation where one recognizes how they feel but they choose to behave in the opposite manner of their instincts and the other is projection where unwanted feelings are displaced onto another person when they then appear as a threat from the external world so these are some of the defense mechanisms and there are many i've only stated three as is was required by the question Number eight, distinguish between classical conditioning and instrumental learning. You have to note that both um, are processes that, are le that, lead to, that lead to learning. And classical conditioning is a learning process that occurs by linking two stimuli together to produce a new learned response in an individual. Instrumental conditioning is a learning process that occurs by linking behavior and the consequence of that behavior. The main difference between classical conditioning and instrumental conditioning is that classical conditioning involves involuntary behavior, whereas instrumental conditioning involves voluntary behaviors. Number nine, identify five classical schools of thought and their founding personalities. So the five uh, schools of thoughts are structuralism and the founding personalities are William Wundt and uh, B. Tichner, functionalism, William James and James A. Angel, behaviorism, B.F. Skinner, Ivan Pavlov, Watson, psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud, as well as the Kao Yang, Gestalt, Max Wethema, Kat Kofka, and Wolfgang Kohler, Humanism, Maslow, and Carl Rogers. List the five, uh, the seven important fields of modern psychology. And these are important fields uh, that explain psychological phenomena and these are psycho psychodynamic and as you are well aware psychodynamic uh, emanates from the works of uh, Sigmund Freud behavioral this is the study and analysis of uh, observational behaviors cognitive uh, psychology that's the science of how we think and is concerned with uh, the inner mental processes like attention, memory, language, among other things. Biological psychology is also called uh, physiological psychology, and it is the study of biology, of the biology of our behavior, and focuses on neurons, hormones, and other aspects that might affect human behavior, like genetics. Cross cultural psychology is the study of human psychological processes across uh, multiple cultures and involves uh, the observation of similar and dif similar behaviors or differences across different cultures and uh, evolutionary this is the study of um, behavior thoughts and feelings as viewed through the lens of evolutionary uh, biology and humanists this is a movement um, that supports the view that humans, human beings as individuals are unique and uh, are capable of uh, determining their own destinies and uh, 
should be viewed as uh, unique creatures. So these are the seven important fields of modern psychology. State and explain the three basic kinds of uh, neurons. And the three are sensory, association, and motor neurons. Sensory neurons, uh, these make it possible for us to be in contact with the outside world. They are sensitive to light, sound, chemicals, that induce taste and sensations, and so forth. Then association neurons, these communicate with each other. Most of the neurons in our brain are association neurons. They allow us to think, remember, and perceive. Motor neurons communicate with um, muscle fibers, and uh, these are cells of the body, and complex contractions and relaxations of these muscle fibers make it possible for us to walk, talk, act, and do so many things. Number 18, what are the assumptions of client-centered therapy? Client-centered therapy, we find it in under humanistic um, psychology. is uh, It is advocated by Carl Rogers. So the basic assumptions of this is that uh, the troubled person is powerful inner resources that uh, can be used to help the individual think and feel better. Know that um, it is client-centered and uh, the term patient is avoided. Instead, the word client is used. This is done in order to downplay the identification of the therapy seeker as a sick person who need healing. Rogers believed uh, that uh, human beings have an inborn tendency to be self-actualizing. It is this tendency that must be tamed in order to improve the lives and li lives of uh, clients, as it were. Number 19, how do we get information out of uh, memory? This belongs to cognitive psychology. And uh, one of the issues or concepts that I used are uh, recall, which is the ability to retrieve information, not in conscious awareness, if you in the brain test is uh, if you write um, blank, if you in the blank test, these are examples where recall is used. And recognition is uh, the ability to identify items previously learned. And we make use of recognition when writing multiple choice questions, which test uh, recognition and relearning is one of the techniques whereby it is the ability to master previously stored information more quickly than you originally learned it and retrieval occurs when one tries to tweak or a web or a make use of associations hoping to move target information into conscious awareness. Number 20, what is REM sleep? And REM, this is a stage of sleep that occurs about uh, every 90 minutes within the occurrence of spots of uh, rapid eye. REM will lie, it's rapid eye movements while the eyes are closed. Number 21, what are the stages of uh, the sleep cycle? Provide a thorough explanation of each stage. So the stages are that uh, stage one, the patient is slower brain activity, close to being awake. They are still asleep, but they are close to being awake. They, they, are, they are just starting to sleep. 
and close to being awake then it's in stage two the person has a lower brain activity with short burst of electrical activity and it's in stage three and four this is where one enters deep sleep the brain activity slows down even more and uh, their heart rate and the breathing slows too stage four is where the person is in their deepest sleep this is usually when they have uh, been sleeping for about 30 minutes or more and the person then moves into rapid eye movement sleep instead of going back to stage one so REM or rapid eye movement sleep stage becomes longer as you sleep longer as well so these are the stages of the sleep cycle which are about four number 22 outline the philosophical roots of uh, psychology the philosophical roots of uh, psychology dates back to the ancient greeks the greek philosopher plato assumed that character and intelligence are largely inherited and that certain ideas are inborn aristotle countered these arguments and said there is nothing in the mind that does not that does not first come from the external world through the senses and uh, in the 19 in the 1600s european philosophers like john locke rejected the notion of inborn ideas suggesting that the mind is a blank slate on which experience is written and uh, rene descartes the french philosopher disagreed believing that uh, some ideas are innate so these are some of the philosophical roots of psychology and the arguments of their philosophies generally uh, dwell on the nature nature debate whereby we one we ask about whether behavior is a result of the environment or is it a result of uh, inborn traits which uh, one is born with the arguments still continue up to today but uh, we now believe that uh, both environment and biological components are important in explaining the occurrence of behavior what are neurons and how do they transmit information so neurons are the building blocks of the nervous system we have sensory neurons which carry messages from the body's tissues to sensory organs inward to the brain and the spinal cord for processing the brain and spinal cord then send instructions out to the body's tissues by via motor motor neurons and between the sensory input and motor neurons information is processed in the brain's internal communication system via interneurons so this is how neurons uh, transmit information within the human body number 24 what do split brains review about the functions of our brain two brain hemispheres so split brain research uh, these are experiments where people uh, if they are corpus callosum corpus callosum severed and it is confirmed that in most people the left hemisphere is more verbal and that the right hemisphere excels in visual perception and the recognition of emotion studies of healthy people with intact brains also confirm that each hemisphere makes unique contributions to the integrated functioning of the brain so split brain experiments or researches have enabled us to know the specific functions of each hemisphere of the brain and this has been noted by studies with the old individuals as well as those that have had their corpus callosum severed number 25 what are stimulants and what are their effects so stimulants are uh, like caffeine and nicotine and they temporarily excite neural activity and arouse body functions people use these substances to to stay awake lose weight or other other issues 
in this category of drugs also includes uh, amphetamines and even more powerful cocaine, ecstasy, speed, and other related drugs. So basically, stimulants excite neural activity and speed up body functions. So these are their effects on the human body. Number 26, what is classical conditioning and how did Pavlov's work influence behavior arisen? So classical conditioning is a type of learning in which an organism comes to associate stimuli. Pavlov's work on classical conditioning laid the foundations of uh, behaviorism and uh, the view that's the view that uh, psychology can be objective. It can be an objective science that studies behavior without the reference to any mental processes. So you will notice that Pavlov was very influential in um, in bringing about uh, conditioning, classical conditioning, and uh, it was around uh, 1897 when he published uh, the results of his uh, experiments on the conditioning of dogs. And it is uh, important to note that originally his studies were intended to study digestion in dogs, but uh, eventually he came up with uh, classical conditioning and influenced uh, a lot of uh, behaviorists. Number 27, explain the basic types of reinforcers. And these are positive reinforcements, negative reinforcement, uh, conditioned reinforcers. So under positive reinforcement, the notion is that uh, you add something desirable so as to increase the occurrence of a behavior. And under negative uh, reinforcement, you remove something undesirable to increase the frequency of the behavior. And uh, primary reinforcers, these include food when angry or having nausea and are int intently satisfying, no learning is required. And conditioned uh, reinforcers such as money are satisfying because we've learned to associate them with more basic rewards such as food medicine that we then buy using the money. And the re immediate reinforcers such as um, for example, unprotected sex offer immediate payback and the delayed reinforcers, just such as a weekly payback. And these are different types of uh, reinforcers that are within the realms of uh, reinforcement. Number 28, how does punishment affect behavior? So this is a behavioral strategy that attempts to decrease the frequency of a behavior. For example, a child's uh, disobedience by administering an uh, undesirable consequence such as spanking or withdrawing something that is desirable, like taking away one's favorite toy. Undesirable side effects can include suppression rather than changing unwanted behaviors, teaching aggression, creating fear, encouraging discrimination, and uh, one is to note that uh, punishment should be exhibited immediately after the inappropriate behavior has been uh, exhibited. And if not uh, done well, may create some un unwanted behaviors uh, within the animal or within the individual who's being punished. So one is to, to make use of punishment with caution as it may trigger undesirable behaviors that may not have been uh, present before the punishment has been effected. Number 29, state and explain the different types of memory. So there are different types of memory which include episodic memory, semantic memory, waking memory, procedural 
memory and implicit memory. Episode, episodic memory, this is uh, where one recalls prior events or experiences which is frequently accompanied by sensory and emotional data. Semantic memory, retaining factual information such as the name of a capital city like um, Harare, Addis Ababa, and uh, Cape Town. So these are retaining factual information of that one actually knows. So and um, working memory, storing information temporarily capable of holding between five or seven items at any given time. And this is also known as short term memory. Procedural memory or body memory using learned actions that require no conscious recall, such as uh, riding a bicycle or doing things that you've been doing, you might not really uh, require conscious recall, but you use learned actions as you perform those performances. And then implicit memory, bringing back an uh, unconscious memory that influences behavior, such as recalling from a stranger's reminiscent of someone unpleasant. So these are the different uh, types of memory. In the max 10, might, uh, might, might help you in uh, denoting how and how much information is may be required from you in uh, in answering this question. And finally, number thirty: What is clinical? What is a clinical psychologist, and what type of clients do they assist? So clinical psychologists help uh, people to deal with mental and physical health issues such as anxiety, addiction, depression, and relationship issues. So after clinically assessing the individuals using tests, discussions, observations, and other therapeutic techniques, they then provide um, appropriate therapy. So they usually assist um, people with anxiety substance abusers, sufferers of uh, post-traumatic stress disorders, and others with uh, related uh, problems. So clinical psychologists, unlike uh, psychiatrists, they do not administer medicine. They only discuss issues and then when if and when the, there is medication required, they refer and they do not prescribe medication, medical treatment per se. So these are the people they ask, assist those with anxiety, substance abusers, post-traumatic stress disorders, sufferers, and any other individuals with related uh, problems. So thank you for watching this video and um, I urge you to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this uh, channel. If you have any issues, queries related to the answers that I've given or any additional information that you may want, may you please um, type on the com comment section so that I can interact and uh, share with you. As I have said earlier, this is uh, part one of a part four part series whereby I will be answering uh, short answer questions related to the course introduction to psychology. Feel free to comment, share, and um, also air out your views concerning what I've already shared. Thank you for your time and may the good Lord bless you.